term multiplayer games is like wide and varied. Um, we want to talk about very specific types of games, but sort of put some constraints on it. So the types of multiplayer games we want to talk about is your fast-paced, online, competitive multiplayer games. Right? For example, like your Overwatches or your Fortnites or your Rocket Leagues, things like that. Uh, they have very particular types of needs that come down to like matchmaking and dedicated game server scaling that we're going to talk about today. Um, and those are the type of games that we want to talk about today. There's, there is a wide variety of multiplayer games, but these are the projects that we want to talk about today and the projects that we both work on as well. So uh, some of you may be familiar with this, some of you maybe not. Um, this is, generally speaking, what a traditional architecture would look like for an online multiplayer game. There are a variety of ways in which one can do this, just so I'm clear. This is a very prevalent way of doing it. Um, that could be a whole other talk in and of itself. Um, but in this particular example, we might have a couple of players that want to play our game. They're like, cool, let's play a game. This sounds awesome. And so they're going to connect to some kind of matchmaker. Uh, usually, a matchmaker will look at things like your skill level, maybe your social graph, who your friends are, put you together in a group so that they can like, pair you together so they think you're going to have a really good gameplay experience. Once they've got you and put you in this group, they're going to go talk to some kind of game server manager. Right? We use this term dedicated game server, and some of you may not be familiar with it. Basically, it is a full simulation of the game that happens somewhere on the internet that your players are therefore going to connect to. Uh, this means that they can share information about what's happening inside the game. The dedicated game server can tell all the players, hey, this is what's going on. And it also gives us con some control in that we can place these game servers around the world at what sort of latency speed we can expect, because we have a basic idea of speed of light and network speeds and good things like that. So this game server manager's job is basically to say, OK, I probably have a huge number of machines. They're probably distributed around the world. And I need to say, OK, let's go find the machine that has some CPU resource available and some memory and start up a game server process on them, and then get that going, and then find the port, and then send that all the way back down the pipe, back down to the matchmakers, so that those game servers can get an IP import, because they're going to connect to an individual process on a machine. And then those game players will both connect to the same IP import on one of those machines to that dedicated game server instance so they can play a game together, right? So they're going to share that simulation. And this is like how a lot of games that we all play, uh, if people play online games, I'm guessing you do because many of you are here, how, how a lot of them work. But a lot of this is usually, a lot of the time, very bespoke. You kind of have to do it yourself, and you have to build it yourself, and that's hard and a lot of work. And I don't know, I find it an interesting problem, but I'm guessing a lot of people don't. So what we want to talk about today is two very particular things. One here is matchmaking. Wouldn't it be lovely if there was some sort of maybe open source, standardized matchmaking framework type thing that helps solve this problem? And then also here, when we talk about this game server manager, right, coordinating game servers over lots of machines. Wouldn't it be nice if there was some sort of open source, standardized game server manager type thing? Wouldn't that be lovely? So let's talk about both of those. But before we get into that, we mentioned this a little bit previously. Um, Kubernetes is at the core of both of the solutions we're going to be talking about today. Um, and I just want to highlight this for three very important reasons. Um, both of these projects run on top of Kubernetes in slightly different ways, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But this is really important. There are several reasons, one of which is simplicity. So usually when talking to game companies that run, say, services such as matchmaking, but also game servers, they run very different platforms for both. Having a single platform for both of these workloads means that there's a simplification of the knowledge you need in your team, the tools you need to use, all that kind of stuff. It makes that much easier for your teams to basically either get up and running and also do your like day three, day four kind of operations. Uh, I think it goes without saying, as many of you are probably quite knowledgeable about, there's a huge ecosystem of tooling here. right? Not only did, was Kubernetes not just built by Google, but a variety of partners that did this work. Um, and there's all the tooling that goes on around it. Finally, and I think most importantly, especially for dedicated game servers, uh, sometimes you just need to put game servers and these kinds of latency-sensitive appli applications in weird places around the world. Just because sometimes players just show up in odd places, and you need to put them there. And maybe your cloud covers it. Maybe we have great GKE coverage there. Awesome. But maybe sometimes we don't. Uh, so having a, a standardized platform like Kubernetes means that you can take your entire stack and put it exactly where your players need. And that's really important to us. So let's get stuck in. 
All right. So we're going to start talking a little bit about OpenMatch. This is a framework that we uh, co-founded last year with Unity. It was announced at Unite Berlin uh, last summer. If you are interested in uh, learning more about the founding of it and our relationship with Unity, I recommend you go <laughs> check out the talk on YouTube about that. Um, we are really focused uh, in this project on solving a lot of the really basic plumbing problems of matchmaking, like getting players connected to the matchmaking service, integrating the matchmaking service with your backend infrastructure, um, but leaving the bits in the middle, which is like your custom matchmaking logic, uh, up to you, not really being prescript prescriptive about that at all. So it's very flexible. Uh, it's designed with APIs that are horizontally scalable, so you can handle uh, your player load even if you end up with a really big hit. And uh, it's designed, as I said, to integrate uh, well with your existing processes or uh, other tools that you want to use. It is written in uh, Golang, but your own custom matchmaking logic you can write in any language you can put in a Docker container. Uh, so how it works. Uh, the game clients will connect to uh, the API that OpenMatch uh, exposes for the front end. They pass in all of the different attributes that you might want to uh, try and match players on. Uh, developers then write these custom matchmaking functions. Uh, like I mentioned before, that can be in any language you want. The only uh, real requirements is you have to be able to package it in a Docker container, because this does run on Kubernetes. And um, it needs to be able to talk to Redis, which is the back uh, backend state storage for OpenMatch. Um, it allows you to run a lot of these uh, matchmaking functions concurrently, which is both a way to handle scale and use uh, the ability that Kubernetes has to schedule those automatically for you, but also to enable you to try to iterate really rapidly on this logic piece that is most important to you as a game developer of how do I figure out which players play together. Um, so let's start with a demo, and then I'll dive in a little bit further in a minute uh, on the actual uh, architecture. Can we switch to the demo? That's great. Awesome. So uh, what I have here is an empty Kubernetes cluster. Uh, let me quickly show you uh, that there's nothing in it. Uh, also uh, important to note up front, I am not very good at typing and talking at the same time. I'll do my best, but I, I'm not, the, not great at that. Uh, so, right now, this uh, project is set up with a number of images. Uh, I've already pulled them, set them up in the project. Most of these images are available publicly from uh, the OpenMatch repository, and we have a, a public uh, container registry you can pull these from. But you can see I've already got the images there. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just install uh, OpenMatch and kind of let you see what the process of that is like so you can see how simple it is. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a Kubernetes config map. Uh, this contains all the configuration uh, for OpenMatch. If anyone here has actually gone and looked at the OpenMatch uh, repository and seen what the configuration looks like, I am applying almost exactly the one that's uh, in the example on the repository. Uh, the only difference you can probably guess from the title there is I turned off the debug logging, because that does not make good for a good demo. <laughs> So first of all, uh, we're going to stand up an instance of Redis. This is just running Redis within Kubernetes. Uh, there is a, uh, it is utilizing a Kubernetes secret for its uh, password, username and password, to log into uh, Redis. Now I'm going to install OpenMatch. This is a series of uh, Kubernetes deployments and services in front of them. Uh, it makes a few. Uh, let me show you those. Uh, so you can see here we have now uh, six pods running, so Redis and then five services from OpenMatch. That's the OM at the beginning of those. Um, these are run as deployments. So if something were to happen, uh, Kubernetes will take care of uh, starting it back up for you. It also allows you to very easily scale those deployments if you uh, get a big hit and you need to handle more players. So the uh, first thing I'm going to do after actually standing up OpenMatch is stick some players in OpenMatch. Uh, this part's going to take just a second because it has to pull down the image. I just made a brand new cluster for this demo. Uh, so what this uh, particular pod is going to do is spin up this pod, uh, just like those other 
uh, images that I showed you earlier are just available for public on the uh, open match uh, public registry. Uh, but it's going to spin up. It's going to uh, queue 10,000 players uh, in open match seven times. That's the seven cycles with uh, 10,000 players per cycle. This is just to get a bunch of players in so I can actually show you what it looks like whenever open match is doing uh, your matching logic. So I'll let that run. It'll take just a second. And then I have a matchmaker that is written against open match. And I use that uh, kind of language intentionally. Uh, open match is not in itself a matchmaker. It is a framework for writing scalable matchmakers on top of Kubernetes. Uh, so this is uh, the example matchmaker, which is currently on the repository. It's not very big. I think it's probably uh, 220 or 250 lines of code. Um, Therefore, it is really basic. Um, but what it does allow me to do is run a lot of concurrent uh, matchmaking functions so you can kind of see how scaling works in open match. So in general, the approach of open match is like you have this very large player population. Mine right now is 70,000 people. Uh, I'm going to try and split up that population uh, into a few different chunks and then look within all of those chunks simultaneously for matches. So allow me to like get a lot of matches at once without having to chew through all of the players in giant piles of sequential code. Um, uh, I, I, one of my uh, deployments sometimes takes a minute to start. <laughs> so the first uh, loop occasionally, I didn't give it long enough to start up for the demo. Uh, but you can see here, uh, I'm looking for two teams of eight, uh, four times in four different parts of the player population. You can see the pools here. Uh, they're between 10 and 15,000 players, roughly, uh, per pool. Uh, within those pools, I'm only looking for 16 players, so this didn't take very long at all. You can see I ran all four of those concurrently in like just a little over two seconds. So that's not very interesting in terms of scale. Open Match is definitely designed to go a lot wider than that. So uh, this time I'm going to split it up into 400 different uh, buckets that I'm looking for players in. And you're going to see a lot of these go by with insufficient players. That means the part of the player population I'm looking at, there literally aren't even 16 players in that part of the population to make a match out of. Uh, so what this is demonstrating is running 400 copies of your match logic concurrently. Uh, this usually takes around 20 or 30 seconds to complete, yeah, 24 seconds. So we ran 400 copies. About two thirds of those found a match. The other third did not because I was looking at parts of the population where there just weren't enough players there. You can see this uh, got us a lot more throughput, though. This matched 4,288 players uh, and managed to match about 180 players per uh, second that it was searching. So that's kind of how you achieve scale with open match. Um, so can we go back to the uh, slides? I'm going to briefly go over uh, the architecture. And then uh, Mark's going to talk about using Agones. So uh, this architecture show is basically the same diagram that Mark showed earlier, only we've taken that box that just said Matchmaker and blown it up to show you all of the parts of Open Match. Uh, so to begin with, the game client would talk to the Open Match front end. Uh, the front end writes the player attributes to Redis. Um, your server manager, uh, which uh, can be anything, maybe you have bespoke code, maybe you're using an off-the-shelf solution, maybe uh, you're using a Gones, I <laughs> would recommend it, uh, would talk to the back end API of Open Match. Um, that kicks off your custom match logic. Uh, your custom match logic gets to read and write data from Redis. It can read and write it directly if you need the, that level of customizability. We also offer an API in front of Redis to do really common uh, matchmaking things like filtering players or retrieving large pools of players from Redis at once. Uh, the server manager will then figure out uh, which players uh, go on which servers. So it'll probably pick a server, get the IP and port of that server. Uh, that gets actually passed back out through Open Match to uh, your game client app, uh, which at this point uh, goes and connects directly to the dedicated game server. That's all real similar to uh, what Mark showed you earlier. Uh, so this is already an improvement, uh, but we still have some kind of bespoke server management system. Uh, so Mark's going to talk to us about replacing that with a Gones. Mark? Uh, awesome. So yeah, like Joseph said, like. We have this other part that we also need to replace. So 
Strangely enough. OK, so we have another open source project called Agones uh, for orchestrating, scaling, and hosting your dedicated game servers. Uh, this has been a fun project. We've been working on it for actually over a year now, now I think about it. Um, and it is built as an extension of Kubernetes that we'll see in a minute. Uh, so it's basically a thing that puts itself inside Kubernetes. So suddenly Kubernetes is like, awesome. I know how game servers work. This is actually really important if people aren't that familiar with dedicated game servers. They have this interesting thing where they go from stateless to stateful. So when you don't have any players on a game server, no one seems to mind if you kill them. When you have players on a game server, people get really upset if you just ruin their gameplay experience. They post things on Reddit. It's awful. No one likes that. So Agones's real capability and part of its core strengths is really managing that transition between the two. Now, what's really awesome is we didn't do this alone. Uh, much like uh, Joseph was talking about with OpenMatch, they built that in collaboration with Unity. Uh, we've been working on this quite closely with Ubisoft since the beginning. Um, it's been a really great collaboration between us. They've been able to bring sort of their, their experience and their knowledge around how to run large game server workloads. And we have been able to bring our knowledge to work on Kubernetes and open source uh, community. Uh, so it's been really great. And we've also got contributions from a wide variety of other people since then as well. So let, I'm going to actually show you how to do some stuff uh, on Agones. And we'll actually show you some code. And you can actually see how it happens. So potentially, unsurprisingly, if you want to start having a game server and running it on Kubernetes and running it on Agones, it goes inside a container. Nothing more special than that. Um, I'm sure that's something a lot of you are very familiar with. The only special thing, quote unquote, that we have is we do have an integrated client SDK that goes into the game server. Um, we have uh, options available in C++, Go, REST. Uh, we actually have a Rust one as well that's getting updated soon. Uh, this is all either gRPC-based or REST-based. So the real short answer here is if you have a language uh, that needs support, we have an SDK for you. I actually realized we also have a Node.js one, and it's not on my slide because it just came in the most recent release, and I haven't updated the slide yet. Um, but yeah, if you want to integrate it, we can do it. And this SDK is really just about managing game server health lifecycle, which is just a little bit different, knowing whether the game server is ready to accept players or not, uh, looking at the configuration, things like that. Basically, standard things you need for game servers. So I said before that um, Agones is an extension of Kubernetes. So when you've used Kubernetes, and I think a lot of you have, right? you're very familiar with services, with deployments. right? You have these nouns that exist inside Kubernetes. Well, once you install Agones, now this new noun called game server is a reality. So we can say to Kubernetes, hey, Kubernetes, I would really like a game server. Uh, I would really like to name this game server Synodic, which is the example we're actually going to use today. It's a free to play open source FPS. Um, and then we can specify things about this game server spec that we want to have available to us. So one of the things that Agones also does is set up that direct port connection. So it'll do that dynamic port allocation for you to set up the port that that uh, information is routed to within inside the game server container. So here, we specify that the game server is going to start on port 2600, but it's dynamic. So it's going to give us a port once we're done. And finally, we're going to say, hey, what's my game server container? What, can I, what have I actually put in here? Now, for those of you who are more familiar with Kubernetes, which many of you are, you have a full pod spec here. So if you want to do config maps, volume mounts, multiple containers, et cetera, et cetera, you're fine. Now, this is great for a single server. In production, in reality, when you really want to do this, usually what you want to do is actually have a large group of pre-spun game servers that are sitting there idle waiting for players. Sometimes game servers can take a little while to spin up. So much as we have pods and deployments inside Kubernetes, we have game servers and fleets. Uh, so fleets, again, like we were talking about previously, are very aware of that change in lifecycle between stateless and stateful. Um, we'll go a little bit into that in a minute. But here, we have a fleet. Uh, it looks very much like a deployment in that we specify how many replicas we want. It can be two, it can be 2,000, up to you. And then we have a template, which is our game server configuration. And that's going to spin up a large chunk of game servers for us, which is awesome. Now, the interesting question you might have at this stage, but Mark, you make these direct connections to these game servers by IP and port. I don't have a load balancer. Uh, I don't have any of the usual tools that I may be familiar with. How do I get one of these out in like an atomic manner? So we have this concept inside um, Agones called an allocation. 
Basically, the job of an allocation is to say, hey, out of this big group of game servers, can I please have one atomically and set it to a, what we call an allocated state, so we know that it has players on it, and just do that work for me. Do it in the right way, find the right place inside the cluster, et cetera, et cetera. So what we can do is we can send another custom resource definition, another thing called a game server allocation, and we can say, hey, for, in this particular instance, hey, for this particular fleet called Synodic, Give me one out of this pool, hand it back to you atomically, just give it to me, and set it to allocated and give me its details, please. We can do actually a lot more with game server allocation. We've got some pretty complex selector logic in there if you need it, but this is a simple example. So once we've done that, we can then play a game on it. So why don't I show you that in action? Uh, can I have us switch over to demo, please? Do, do, do. Thank you very much. Uh, is that readable in the back? Give a thumbs up. Perfect. Awesome. So first thing I'm going to do, much like Joseph, we're going to install Agones. I'm going to use Helm, that's Package Manager, uh, to install Agones. You can use uh, straight YAML if you want. Agones, namespace, Agones system, Agones, Agones. So if you're not familiar with Helm, Helm is a package manager uh, for Kubernetes to basically install a bunch of stuff. Um, so that's kind of as complicated as it is to get it up and running. We want to see the, uh, what we have in there. I've got a system. Right? So we have a bunch of things in there. There's a controller, all sorts of stuff. But now we have Agones installed. Now Kubernetes understands what game servers are. And this actually runs throughout the entire system, which I actually think is really, really excited. So I can actually say kubectl get game servers. And this is something it now understands. It's going to say we don't have any yet, but that's, that's actually really, really cool. Um, so let's, uh, let's create a fleet of game servers. We saw that Synodic one we had previously. So uh, I'm going to just apply dash f examples Synodic fleet. Now everything I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do through YAML files. Uh, you may be very familiar with this. You could do this through the Kubernetes API as well. Um, it's all kind of, you can, you can change one for the other as needed. Uh, so now I can say, hey, get game servers. Let's see if those are up and ready. And they are. So we can see here some information. We have a couple of game servers there. If you remember from the example, we asked for having two. They're both in the state ready, so they're actually ready to be allocated. We can do stuff with them. And that's all super nice. We can actually look at this from fleets as well. Right? We can see here we have two that are ready. Um, but two game servers is boring, right? That's no fun. I mean, we're not going to get really huge, but that's we can scale fleet replicas. Let's just say 200. Oh, I need to tell it what fleet. <laughs> there we go. So now we can put that up to 200. If we want to look at that here, we can get those details. That's going to that's gonna take a little while to uh, come up. Let's come on. You can do better than that. There we go, 74. Um, but we can actually look at this in a different way, too. Um, I'm going to actually refresh this. So we have uh, inbuilt. Grafana dashboards uh, and metrics that are available. Has that gone down in between? Nope. Is that going to run? Yep. Let's just rerun that. There we go. There we go. Sweet. So we have inbuilt metrics, uh, Grafana dashboards. We can also export to Stackdriver. Basically, everything comes out through, um, through Open Census, so you can send it just about anywhere um, to do all the stuff that you need to do as well to manage your game servers. Uh, so here we can see uh, how many are starting up, how many are allocated, how many are ready. Uh, this is running a little slow behind. Usually it pings about every 30 seconds. There we go. That's better. So about 100. You can't see that. That's tiny, but you can take my word for it. It's about 186. There we go. Uh, we can see rates, and there's a variety of metrics that we can take advantage of during this. But let's go. We'll go back to uh, here. So. If we look at our fleet, all right, so we have 200 ready. They came up pretty quick, which is super nice. Uh, let's allocate one out of this, this set. Uh, Create-f. Usually, this would be something you would probably do through the API, like your matchmaker would call this and say, hey, can I allocate? We might show that a little later. Um, allocation, I'm going to go dash o yaml, so it'll return to me exactly uh, the results of what it's done. So we'll do that. Um, I'm not going to worry about what's up top. I'm just going to look at here. So here we can see we've got a particular game server. Awesome. Uh, its bid state has been set to allocated. And here are its details. Uh, so we have an IP and a port. So we'll do the fun thing that everyone really wants to see is let's actually play a game on here and see if it works over this network. <laughs> so 
I've demo fun time. Yeah, exactly. So let's run that. I'm just going to move that over a touch so that I can see this. And uh, let's see if I can type it. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. So this is Sonotic. This is, uh, this is the open source uh, first person shooter that we were talking about previously. Dot two three zero colon. Where are we? What's the dynamically allocated port? 7162. Let's click join. Black screen is actually good. I don't know why. They just made the game to give me heart attacks. That's just, that's just how they like to roll. Um, come on, you can do it. Beautiful. OK, so now I'm going to play this on my trackpad, uh, which will be hilarious. Let's see if I can find some of the other players that are about. Come on. Yeah, this always happens. Whenever I'm playing like, alone, like, there's players everywhere. And then as soon as I get like, in front of an audience, like, nobody's around. There we go. There's some bots. So there's some rockets. Yay. So this is me playing on a, on a Kubernetes cluster that's actually running US West East. No, West whichever one is closest to us. Um, and it's all working, right? Like, you can see I'm playing a game, and it's pretty awesome. So that's cool, but I want to show off a few more things before we, we finish up this demo, so I'm just going to close that. Um, we can see here we have one game server that's allocated, right? There's a player playing on it. Uh, let's allocate a couple more. Just want a few more. And maybe at this point in time, we actually like, ah, oh, you know what? This version's not good. Let's, let's scale it down. Let's get rid of it. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's uh, kubectl scale fleet uh, synodic replicas. We're actually going to make it zero. <laughs> let's get rid of all of them. Now, players, like I mentioned before, players will get mad if we kill the games that they're playing. So we don't want that. Uh, so what's, uh, what Agones does is it's very aware of that allocated game server state. So on fleets themselves, we could do rolling updates. We could do uh, scale up and scale down. But no matter what happens, it's always going to say, oh, that's allocated. I'm not going to touch that. So now if I look at my fleet, there we go, we can see we still have three. Right? We have those three allocated game servers. We're not going to touch those until they either self-shut down or, or we specifically tell them to be deleted. So that's kind of one of the big powers of Agon is, is managing that workload. Everything else on top of that, all the utilities we provide for game servers, is super nice. But this is really just the core of how um, Agones works. Awesome. Can we go back to the slides, please? Excellent. So wouldn't it be lovely if we were friends? <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about putting together Agones and OpenMatch. Uh, so for. Uh, this session, we had a matchmaker uh, built on OpenMatch that understands and coordinates Agones fleets. Um, there is customized matchmaking logic that's running within OpenMatch uh, to look for compatible players. In this case, uh, all it is looking for is that the player said that it wanted to be part of our uh, GCP Next demo. Uh, so it's not particularly exciting matchmaking logic, <laughs> but it does show that it is possible. Um, once enough players are found, in this case, we are looking for a whopping two players who want to play together, uh, the matchmaker will allocate a ready game server from the fleet. And once that's been allocated, it'll send back out through OpenMatch uh, the connection details so that uh, OpenMatch can connect to the game server. So back to the demo. Uh, do any of you watch cooking shows? Any, yeah, a couple of you. OK, so this may be familiar. Um, I have a pre-baked cluster that I'm going to pull out of the oven right now <laughs> so that you don't all have to wait for me to spin up uh, a uh, cluster. Sorry. If I ran that command, you would have to wait. Uh, let me switch over to that. So um, basically, uh, this is a cluster that we made earlier. It has plenty of uh, CPUs. It already has Agones installed on it. Uh, I'll show you briefly what's running in it. Um, so in this case, uh, you can see it already has OpenMatch installed. This all looks really familiar from the previous demo, although this is a different and slightly larger cluster. Um, so <clears throat> first of all, let's put in Agones fleet in it. Uh, so in my case, uh, my fleet is a little bit different. It is not running Xenotic. It is running UDP-server, which is the most ridiculously simple UDP server we could come up with. All it is is a server that takes uh, UDP clients and echoes timestamps to them. Once per second, it echoes the epoch timestamp. 
So it is about as proof of concept as you can get. Um, director is the name of uh, this particular pattern of a matchmaker. I'm going to stand one of these up. So this matchmaker understands uh, Agones and is looking for a fleet called UDP server. Uh, it is currently looking at that fleet. If I were to show you logs from it, all you would see is an endless loop of there aren't any players, there aren't any players, there aren't any players over and over again, so I won't show you that. Let me actually put some players in. So uh, the first thing this does is put one player in. That's significantly less than the 70,000 I did last demo, but this is going to pay off. Just give me a second. Uh, so we've got one headless client queued for matching. Now I'm going to uh, queue an interactive client. This part can take a while. Oh, well, it didn't. You can see it already got an assignment. Uh, that came from uh, Agones. So the matchmaker has already gone to Agones, issued via the Kubernetes API an allocate request, gotten back the allocation with this IP address and the dynamically uh, allocated port, like uh, Mark showed you earlier. Uh, that's this assignment right here. And uh, now it's waiting for me to do something. So I'm going to connect to that UDP server. Uh, as I said before, this is not the most exciting uh, demo you'll see at Next, but it is a good proof of concept. So if I click Start, uh, I am telling that UDP server, hey, start sending me timestamps. So if anyone's curious what time it is in, in UTC right now, here you go. <laughs> um, so we can also stop. This has a very basic uh, REPL built in. Uh, so that unsubscribes me. Um, then I can quit. So once I quit, it's deleted my UDP client. Um, that game is still running. Uh, it still has the other player on it. Now I'm just going to spin up uh, some headless clients, two at a time for a while, and watch uh, Agones. Uh, this is demoing something that uh, is also really awesome that Agones can do for you that is not in uh, the demo that Mark was showing us earlier, which is Agones can do auto scaling. So this is set up with a fleet auto scaler poli policy that says, um, I want at least uh, two available ready servers at all times. So every time that it allocates all of the servers, it will go back to Kubernetes and start up more game servers for you to keep that warm buffer he was talking about earlier. So this is. Uh, Basically, just a bunch of numbers on the screen, but you can see that everything is working. If I leave this up here uh, while I talk, you will see that slowly, uh, as my uh, matchmaker is pulling in players, uh, allocating servers from the fleet and putting players on those servers, the fleet will then go uh, behind the scenes and start up a couple of more servers. Two at a time is what I had it set for. Because uh, when I set it to 20 earlier, it just shot up so fast that you didn't see anything in the demo. But the number 200, like he showed you before, it wasn't very exciting. Um, all right, can we go back to the slides, please? Awesome. So uh, let's talk about what that did. Here is, we're back to the previous diagram, only we've collapsed back down that giant open match box to be this nice little stack in the corner. So you can see we had the players connecting to OpenMatch. They connected to the front end API that we were talking about before. Um, OpenMatch is running a matchmaker inside of it that understands uh, Kubernetes, and that's running the custom match logic I talked about before, looking for these headless clients that are tagged that they want to play in the next demo. Uh, as it finds those, it talks to the Kubernetes API. Uh, it asks for an allocation from the fleet that reaches out to the Agones controller. The Agones controller goes, grabs a particular server, moves that server to allocated state, gets the IP and port uh, for that server, sends that back out open match to the game clients, uh, which uh, it's really hard to see on this. But that is a green line going back the other way, uh, as opposed to the blue line we had before. And then those players connect uh, directly to that dedicated game server and play. Uh, now, once you've got all of this in place, uh, Open Match is capable of scaling horizontally if you get a really big hit game and you need to handle uh, a much larger player base than you expected. Agones is capable of handling basic auto scaling for you. Uh, so this can significantly cut down the amount of development time you need to do around building uh, the nuts and bolts part of your uh, game backend. So uh, 
Mark, you want to talk a little bit about sure. other features? Sweet. Um, so we, we showed a bunch of stuff today. Uh, there's a lot of work that have gone into both of these projects. So there's a variety of stuff that we haven't really talked about. Um, one of which I want to highlight again, I sort of touched on it previously, like both of these projects worked across cloud providers. There's nothing special about the Kubernetes that we're running on, nothing like that. It all uses standard Kubernetes tooling across the board on both of them. Um, Joseph did touch on this, but there's fleet deployment, node auto scaling. Basically, both projects have the capability to auto scale with your load. Uh, so if you're running in the cloud, you have that elastic ability to shrink and grow as your requirements need. Both projects have local development tools. So if you want your developers to not necessarily spin up an entire like, Kubernetes cluster locally, or they just want a lightweight testing environment, they both have tools available to do that. Um, I showed off some of the metrics and dashboards that are available in Agones. There's a whole lot more, as well as metrics and dashboards that are available for OpenMatch as well. Yeah, so. we use all the same standards. We also use OpenCensus, Prometheus, and Grafana. Yep, so it's all good stuff. Uh, future developments, uh, I'll talk a little bit about roadmap for Argonez. Um, we're looking to hit 1.0 this year. That's a big, broad statement. That gives us lots of room to wiggle. Um, I'm happy with that, which is good. Um, but we have a lot more stuff. We've been doing a lot of performance improvements in the last few releases, uh, but many more are looking to come. We want to do more metric collection display. There's a wide variety of metrics for game servers that we want to take advantage of and, and display for customers. Uh, better commercial engine integration. Right now, there's lots of people who are using Unreal and Unity, but we want to have some standardized tooling around that just to make life easier for people. Uh, multi-cluster and multi-cluster coordination. Uh, we're looking at a variety of ways on how we can do that and make that easier for people as well. Um, and it looks like in 1.14, we have some really nice Windows hostings. We want to look at how we can support that for game developers, especially at development time where a lot of game developers use Windows, uh, but also su supporting it in production workloads as well. You want to talk about OpenMatch? Yeah, so from the OpenMatch uh, standpoint, Unity has recently contributed their design for longer lived uh, matching logic, which is to say you can stand up the matching logic in Kubernetes and not spin it down in between the cycles of your matchmaker. So it makes it very uh, fast to kick off the matchmaking logic. It's already there and running. Uh, it'll just spin down and use very little CPU whenever it's uh, not necessary. Uh, we're also expanding metrics and dashboards. We're actually in the process of doing another design iteration on what metrics uh, people want to get out of OpenMatch. So if you're interested in that, please uh, come uh, put your comments in the issues on the GitHub repository. Uh, we are going to be implementing player and match tracing so that you will be able to pretty easily see when a player went into your system, what exactly they did, what all the processes they went through, which matchmaking uh, functions considered them, uh, which match they got put in, which server they ended up on. That should all be things that you should be able to trace through uh, whenever you need to debug something or troubleshoot something or just uh, validate that things are working the way that you expect them. We, we want that to all be built in and baked in tools that uh, we can all work towards taking for granted in matchmaking. Um, and finally, we're uh, just now getting the full build chain set up with Make, which is going to kind of get all the fancy GitHub badges around um, you know, CI, CD. Whenever uh, PRs get merged in, they're going to need to be uh, validated. So uh, we are a slightly younger project than Agones. We are only on 0 0.4, but we have plans to launch 0 0.5 soon. And uh, shout outs to the team that is working hard to make that happen. Fantastic. Uh, before we run away, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, if you want to get an Agones cluster up and running, you can find Agones on the Google Cloud Marketplace. So if you want a quick test cluster so that you can get things up and running and Agones installed, you can basically go boop, boop, boop. And that's literally the noises it makes, boop, boop, boop. Um, <laughs> so that you can get an Agones cluster up and running and play, put some game servers on it and start testing it out. Right. Uh, finally, before we go, where yeah. can people go to learn more? So where to find us? Uh, this has the eventual URL uh, home that OpenMatch is going to live in. We haven't pushed to this site yet. <laughs> uh, so don't be surprised if you go look at it on your phone immediately after the session if it's not there yet. But this is going to be uh, live on the internet in perpetuity. So uh, by the time you're watching this on YouTube later, it's probably already there. Uh, if you need to go find more details about it immediately, please go check out GitHub or just Google search Open Match. Uh, you can also uh, follow myself on uh, Twitter. That's my Twitter handle. Sweet. Uh, Agones, uh, Agones.dev, we have a full site there with documentation, which will also link you to a GitHub repository. You can follow it on Twitter at Agones.dev, and you can follow me on Twitter at Neurotic. I'll also mention that we both have uh, very active Slack channels uh, as well as Google Groups. 
Um, so if you want to get involved, please come join us in Slack. We would love to have more contributors. Uh, yes. the diversity of impact and variety of perspectives is very much appreciated. Yeah, we um, both think that open source has a really bright future in games, so please come and contribute. Absolutely. Finally, uh, before we break into questions, I just want to mention my business cards are down here. So if you think you're going to have a question maybe in two months' time or in three weeks' time, but not right now, please feel free to come up and grab some. Uh, but finally, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to spend with us. Your time is valuable, so we appreciate you spending it with us and listening to us. But uh, without further ado, we'll open the floor up for questions.